Hello, welcome back to Tactical Tuesday with Johnny Tiger on August 30th, 2022. Yes, I know, I owe you guys another Music Monday. Honestly, Kit and, uh, and I fully intended to get that episode out yesterday, ah, but things happened, and you know when you are when you live on your own, this is not that I'm shifting blame onto Kitten or no uh, anything else. I'm just stating the obvious. When you live on your own, you can easily say, okay, two o'clock today, I'm going to stop everything. And I'm going to start rehearsing for Music Monday, and I'm going to start filming at three o'clock. When you have two people living in the same place, even though both of you intended to get that episode out, it is really difficult to actually say, okay, how both of us need to stop everything and uh, put everything on the side, and we are going to start rehearsing at 2 o'clock and start filming at 3, and then we are going to stop by 5 o'clock. It's really difficult to uh, coordinate the schedule. Uh, so this is my little excuse <laughs> for uh, having missed two Music Monday in a row. I'm really starting to feel a bit slovenly. Uh, and some people may say, well, wait a second. How come you are able to get the other episode out? No problem. How come you can get Tactical Tuesday and Western Wednesday? Well, this is because Tactical uh, Tuesday and Survival Saturday and things like this. I don't need to rehearse. I, I just basically... Uh, Go through what I'm going to talk about in my head, and then grab the camera, and off I go. I don't need to rehearse. Um, with the Wednesday, I kind of need to sit down and uh, read a little bit, but that is okay. None of these episodes take as much prep as Music Monday, uh, and maybe Toy Thursday. Toy Thursday take a lot too. So it will happen. I promise. Uh, Right now, I'm thinking maybe Thursday, I will be able to get it caught up on Music Monday. But for now, let's enjoy our little Tactical Tuesday. So we've talked a lot about elbows and punching, kicking, and um, grappling, and all kind of stuff. I have been asked multiple times by people, what is the most important muscle group uh, if you want to be good in a fight? But which body part is the most important? Well, you guys heard me say this multiple times. Your ultimate weapon as a human being is between your ear. Yeah, I'm not talking about your mouth. I'm talking about your brain. That is number one, weapon number one, okay? If you want to be a good fighter, if you want to be good at self-defense, martial art, you need to have that brain that be able to problem solve and have that tactical thinking at the critical moment. A lot of people have this idea that fighters are big and dumb. Well, they might be dumb when it comes to math or science. But ask them, anything about fighting, anything about uh, punching, body mechanic, when to do what, their brain will problem solve that on the dime, like a supercomputer. So your brain is number one. What is number two? Some people say arms, some people say shoulders, some people say back, some people say lateral muscles, some people say hand-eye coordination, some people say elbow, some people say knee. I'm going to tell you this. When it comes to what is the second most important body part or muscle group uh, that in, for, for fighting, for self-defense, for martial art, it is your legs. And I'm not even talking about kicking, because we've already talked about this before. You actually don't kick that much in self-defense, in a street brawl situation, uh, for various reasons. And sometimes kicking based martial arts, sorry if your background is Taekwondo, uh, kicking based martial arts like Taekwondo uh, Caprera, uh, 
or uh, 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 the uh, French uh, savat, savate, depending on how you pronounce that. Uh, a lot of kick-based martial arts, they don't perform very well in a street fight scenario, mostly because they focused only on kicking. Right? Uh, why does Muay Thai perform exceedingly well in a street fight? Because people who do Muay Thai, they don't just use their knee, they don't just use their shin, they're good with their elbow, they're good with the punches, and their whole body is a weapon. Okay, so if your whole martial art is built on only kicking, only punching, only wrestling, there's going to be something that someone does in the fight that you don't know how to deal with. But I digress. Let's go back to talking about legs. Like I said, I'm not even just talking about kicking with the leg. The importance of leg in your self-defense and martial arts development is mostly known in uh, footwork, stances. So today, I want to sort of do a quick run through uh, several movements to illustrate why is it that we as instructors are so hard on you guys, on, on our students, on your footwork, on your stances, on your leg work, on doing those squats, doing those uh, leg presses, doing those leg exercises. Why are we so big on that? Because without your legs, you are simply not going to be very effective. Okay? Without engaging your legs, you are simply not going to be very effective no matter what is it that you are trying to do. First, let's look at what, if, what are legs. Legs consist of some of the major muscle groups in your body. Legs are also tightly interconnected with your back, your lower back, your glute, everything. Okay, all the power that your, uh, all, all that needed to generate power in your body. So if your footwork is off, that power does not happen. If your footwork is good, then you can have small arm, you can have weak back, you can have weak chest. That power will still come through and it's going to happen, that you're going to be amplified above the sum of all your parts. This is why I have seen a lot of female fighters, even though they are really small, they can generate amazing amount of striking force, amazing amount of grappling, uh, tor torquing, and uh, takedown power. Mostly, if you look at their legs and their footwork, these women are exceedingly good at uh, moving their leg at the right time, using their legs for leverage, stepping to the right place so you don't have leverage and they do, and so on and so on. Let's take a simple jab, a boxing MMA jab. For example, huh? let's say I am, obviously if I'm close to my opponent, like, you know, uh, six inch, eight inch close, and I want to jab, I can throw a lot of power into that, no problem. Because I can engage my back and my arm and everything, right? But let's say, in a fighting scenario, I am proper striking distance, I'm like mid-range. The person is slightly outside my arm reach. I can reach them with my jab. I can reach them with my jab. But watch what happens if I'm just counting on my arm and my back. Okay, does that hurt? Yeah, would that hurt? Yeah. Would that knock you out? Eh, questionable. Mostly, most likely not. No matter how hard I hit, from this range, 
if I'm using my back, my hip, my arm, no good. Okay, it's just not going to hit very hard. However, the moment I engage my leg, the moment I engage my leg, watch this. I don't even have to move my leg. I just have to flex my knees, push off my uh, back foot. Eh? That jab is now knockout jab. I'm not even moving my leg. I'm just moving, engaging my thigh, my knee, my ankle. I'm not moving in closer. It's still the same distance, still the same jab. But with engaging my leg, this is suddenly a lot harder. Now, let me show you guys this little trick. If I engage my footwork, now it's not just a leg. Now I actually move my feet. Then this jab suddenly becomes totally devastating. Like this. Jab. Jab. Okay, what's going on there? The first time I throw a jab, I'm standing with my left foot forward. As this jab goes out, I shift my footwork so my right foot come forward, my left foot is back. Which means when my left hand, my, when my jab come out a second time, it is no longer a jab. It is now a power punch, right? I'm not moving position. I'm just switching my leg from left forward to right forward. Jab, power punch, right? That's all. Little bit of footwork, turn this one single jab into a devastating knockout power punch. Next, let's look at this elbow again. Remember, when we talk about elbow, a skip and a lunge will make your elbow hit a lot better than if you just stand still. Okay, we talked about this extensively during the elbow section, but it's still tied into your footwork. Okay? If I throw my elbow from here, no matter how much core and muscle I throw into it, no good. It's just going to irritate my opponent. But if I add this little footwork, this AKA this little skip forward, push, push, eh? not going to get up after that. Let's look at the simple hammer fist. If I am standing in a regular fight stand, aka my left foot is forward, my right foot is back, and I want to throw a left hammer fist coming diagonally across the body, so I chamber this to the right shoulder, and then I whip this down across my body. Okay? Now, that's hard hitting. No doubt about that. But, it is not the full potential of your hammer fist. Let me show you guys a little trick. Again, tie into your footwork. That will maximize this hammer fist to something totally, totally different. Okay? So this time, rather than just standing here, swinging to the opposite shoulder, and sweeping it across diagonally, I want you guys to, when, when you cock your hammer fist, step your left foot close, so pull your left foot back, so it's close to your right foot, so your stance is nice and narrow. And then, 
when you are ready to whip this out, glide your left foot back to its starting position. Okay, this is going to generate such a different in force. It's going to be more like whoosh, whoosh. Right? Just this little shuffle with your forward foot back forward. This is going to give you so much more force with that hammer fist. Next, let's talk about grappling. Here is where I'm going to segue into a little funny story that actually just happened a couple of days ago. Uh, I was at a studio uh, working with students and helping people out with their uh, arm drag. And my sensei came over and wanted to illustrate something with me. And he said, here, here's my arm. Drag my arm. Okay, I, so I did. I did arm drag. And he stumbled, like how he's supposed to. And then he said, okay, this time I'm going to resist. And uh, you'll see that if you drag my arm, it's not going to work. So he said, here's my arm. And I grabbed his arm, and I arm dragged. <laughs> and he stumbled. And he's like, wow, okay, let's try that again. Here, I'm going to really give you some resistance this time. And he gave me his arm, and I grabbed his arm, and I arm dragged him, and he stumbled. And this was when my sensei kind of sheepishly reached down and smacked me on the leg. And he said to one of the students who were watching from the side, he said, it's these goddamn legs of his, that's why. Okay? And yes, I have pretty strong legs. And I know how to move my feet. I know how to uh, utilize my footwork to maximize my forces. And this is why... I can, uh, generally speaking, drag people, move people a lot bigger than myself. Um, back when I was doing MMA, constantly sparred against people, 240 pounds, 260 pounds, 280 pounds. The only person who uh, gave me trouble size-wise was someone who was all the way up to 350 pounds. By that point, I couldn't do anything with him. He was simply too big. Uh, but 240 pounds? A guy 40 pounds, 60 pounds, 80 pounds bigger than me, no problem. So, let's look at this. If I'm going to wrestle somebody to the ground, like Bruce here, and I, let's say I go in for an underhook, like this, double arm underhook, very simple, right? Face to face, we're here, he's right here in front of me. We are facing each other, we're barely any distance apart. And we're grappling, we're wrestling. Okay, from here, let's say I want to move him. Okay, I'm pushing with my feet. I'm pushing with all my muscles. I'm lifting, I'm pulling. Nothing is happening. Okay, this guy, 250 pounds, with a base full of sand here. 250 pounds. Me... Underhooking him like this, trying to move him uh, from this dis distance. Nothing is ever going to happen, okay? Not going to happen. He's going to wrestle me to the ground first. But watch, what's a little different? What a little different we're going to make if I simply take a step back, okay? Rather than standing directly in front of him, I take a big step back, and now, look at that. Yeah, yeah, almost weightless, no problem at all. One little step back makes a world of difference because by taking this step back, now my center of gravity drastically lower, my muscles have room to extend and contract, I have more leverage to engage my forward leg, my hip, my torquing, my core, everything okay so again your leg your footwork very important even especially especially in grappling now for something fun even in sword blades 
weapon work. Let's say I got this big broadsword in my hand, and I'm in a fight, like the, I'm in a sword fight. I'm back in the medieval time. I'm fighting elves and orcs and vampires and dragons, whatever. Okay. If I take a nice wide barbarian style stance and swing from the waist, <laughs> what's going to happen is if I miss, my sword end up all the way to the right of my body, leaving my entire chest exposed to the counter thrust, counter cut of my opponent. This is when people get killed, okay? This is when people get killed. Because, yes, they got their stance nice and firm. They got their torquing, big swing. But there's no way you're going to check that momentum. Okay? So, rather than doing this, it's exactly the same cut or the same type of cut. But rather than swinging from the waist, I'm going to relax my arm, relax my hand, everything here nice and loose, okay? My grip is not loose, obviously, I don't want to lose my sword. But my elbow, my arm, nice and loose. I'm just going to whip this out by stepping forward, right? Out in. I step forward, sword out, step back, sword in. It's still a horizontal cut with a lot of force, but my sword no longer fly all the way to the right, exposing my chest, okay? Just by this little shuffle step, forward and back, forward and back, okay? I can cut and bring my sword back to guard myself. Just a little fun trivia. This footwork stuff is very irrelevant, even in weapons work. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tactical, tactical Tuesday, and I'll be sure to be back tomorrow on Wisdom Wednesday. And like I said, I'll try to make up to you guys for the, some music on uh, Thursday, hopefully before I do Toy Thursday. For now, have a good night.